Hey Code Crew, what's up? Welcome to my Firebase tutorial series where we are going to build an app together that is going to leverage various parts of the Firebase platform. The first one being Firebase authentication. We're going to build a custom login UI that is going to connect to the authentication store on the Firebase platform and we're going to use that to store the users and the credentials and stuff like that but it's going to be interacting with our custom built UI. Now, the second part of it is we want to use Firestore. I'm going to show you how to retrieve data from Firestore and then display it into a table view in your app. I'm also going to show you how you can input data from your app and write that data to the remote Firestore database. Now, if that all sounds good to you, I want you to give this video a big thumbs up hit subscribe below and hit that bell notification so you don't miss the next video in this series. And one more thing before we get started, I want you to drop me a comment below and let me know if you've ever used Firebase before because depending on your experience level with Firebase and the other people watching this series, I am going to tailor the next videos coming up and go faster and slower depending on what you guys reply. So please make sure, drop a comment below and let me know if you've used Firebase Firestore or Firebase authentication before. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start by creating a brand new Xcode project here. Now, I want you to go here, create a brand new Xcode project. Under iOS, choose single view application. And I'm gonna call this Firestore demo. If this is the first time ever that you're creating a new Xcode project, then Chances are this will be empty, but you can copy what I have here. Instead of com.code with Chris, you can put either com.yourname or com.yourcompany. Uh, and together with the product name, it's going to form this bundle ID, which is going to be important for us. As for a team, you can leave it as none for now. If you don't have a team, you can always set one up for free after the fact. Now, uh, for the language, I want you to choose Swift. And for all of this stuff, just leave it unchecked. Or if it is checked, just uncheck them all so you have what I have here. Now, Swift UI um, is something that is still in beta right now and it's changing. So I'm not going to use it. We're still going to stick with trusty old storyboards as much as we love it or hate it. <laughs> so let's go ahead, click next. And I'm going to save this in a folder on my desktop that I've created for this project called Firebase Tut. And source control unchecked. So let's create our project. All right, just like that, we've got our brand new project. Again, take note of the bundle identifier because we're going to need that real soon. So we're going to now navigate to firebase.google.com. So let me actually just back out of here. So I'll show you what this looks like in case you don't have an account yet. Uh, you're gonna land on a web page like this. I would click, there should be a sign in button in the upper right hand corner or something like that, or sign up. Go ahead and log in with your Google account or sign up for a new Google account. Uh, and then you will be brought to a screen that kind of looks like this, except that you might not have any projects. Uh, I'm going to add a new project, as should you. And it says that I'm three projects away from the project limit. Now, there is a limit. I think it's like, what do I have here? 7, 10, 12. So that's 15 projects. You can request for more projects if you need to. And then depending on the reason, uh, they will allow you or deny you. I've requested it before on my other uh, Google account and they approved me. So I don't, I don't think it should be a problem. Add new project, I'm gonna call this uh, Firestore Demo. And uh, how about Firestore YouTube Demo? Oh, project ID, why would it do that? I mean, I don't think it really matters. It's just for your own identification purposes. Now for this part, if you're actually creating a, an app that you're going to push into production and you're going to release it, I would actually take a closer look at how they are using this data and you know, decide whether you are okay with that or not. For this demo, I am just going to accept and create project. You know, because if you're going to be storing, let's say really confidential information, you just want to make sure that um, how they're going to be using your data and sharing your data is uh, compliant with your company or uh, different standards in your industry. All right, so let's click continue and we're going to continue setting up this uh, backend. Now, uh, since we're creating iOS apps, we're gonna click on iOS here. Actually, before we do this, 
I think I skipped a step. Let me just explain to you what we're doing here. So, so far we've signed up for a Firebase account if you haven't already, but when you clicked on add a new project, you're basically creating a backend for your app, a Firebase backend. And that's going to give you several things for your app. One is, if you see here on the left-hand side, an authentication user store, you have database, obviously for the data that you're gonna store, storage, which is file storage. These things I haven't really used, so I can't say as much, but essentially by creating a Firebase project, you're creating a Firebase um, backend for your specific app. You're going to get um, a configuration file for your app, which you're going to add to Xcode as you're gonna soon see. All right, so let's click on iOS here. And this is where that bundle ID comes into play. So go back to your Xcode project and copy this bundle ID here, paste it into there. You can add a nickname for your app. This is just for your own identification purposes or an app store ID if you are submitting this or after you've submitted it and created the catalog listing in the app store. But for us, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna register the app and we're gonna download this configuration P list and we're gonna add it into Xcode as you can see here. We simply drag it and drop it into the file navigator. So let's go ahead and download that. I'm just going to, I'm gonna put it into the same folder right here and we're gonna click next and then we are going to add it to our Xcode. So let's open that up, let's open the folder and I'm going to just click and drag this under my info.plist. It's gonna pop this open. The two important things for you to take note of here is make sure that this is checked, add to targets, because this is going to add that file and include it into this specific um, app. Now, destination copy items if needed, I usually check this as well, because this makes a copy of that plist into your project folder, and it just keeps it all nice and tidy. So we can finish that. So let me just show you what it's done here. This is where I downloaded the file, but as you can see inside, it's actually copied it into the project folder. So I can actually delete the one that I downloaded because it's made a copy of it inside the project already. So you just don't have files floating around everywhere. All right, so this part is done. The next part is um, all of the Firebase library files or the Firebase SDK. Now this contains all of the Firebase classes that is going to let us talk to the Firebase backend. And this is what makes using these sorts of platforms uh, really attractive because you don't have to write a lot of code. They give you all of these classes and libraries for you to leverage and you can just call methods, pass in data, and th these pre-written methods will basically contain the networking code to go talk to their backend and send them the data, retrieve the data, it's gonna let you query the data, all that sort of stuff. So that's what this Firebase SDK is all about. And we need to add these files, you know, this code into our Xcode project. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. You can actually download the zip file and then you can manually add it to your project as just a whole bunch of uh, files. The downside of this is that from time to time, uh, Firebase updates these libraries, they make changes to the methods, changes to the codes, and you're not going to know this unless you um, kind of keep up to date with their changes, and then you're gonna have to re-download the zip file and re-import it into your project, and it becomes a nightmare when you're talking about lots of code libraries, if you're using a lot of different third-party libraries. This is where CocoaPods comes in if you haven't used this before, you actually have to set this up on your computer first. And this is a package manager or a dependency manager, which basically keeps track of which libraries need updating. And then you can type in a simple command and it's going to download all of the updated versions of those libraries and update the copies in your project. So it is an easy way to manage all of these third party libraries and make sure that you have up to date versions. All right, so if you haven't installed CocoaPods on your machine yet, I have a video to show you guys how to do that. Just check out the video on the screen in the upper right-hand corner now. I guess you would have to pause this video and then go 
install CocoaPods following that video first and then come back to this video. Now, if you already have it installed, then we can continue on right here. So I already have it installed. I'm going to go on with this video. So what you do is you can open up terminal on your Mac and you can navigate to that folder that your project is in. So if you're not familiar with these terminal commands, LS will list all of the current files and directories in your, um, in the path that you're at currently. Since my folder is in the desktop, I need to navigate there. And as you can see, this is my root a user directory that's there's my desktop folder right there and to kind of drill into that uh, you do cd space desktop and then now i'm you can see that the path has changed to desktop if you do ls again you can see all of the files and folders here uh, the one i want is actually firebase tut so cd firebase and a shortcut is actually just press tab and it's going to auto complete that folder name for you so if I do ls, I've got the uh, project folder in there too. So I'm going to drill into that. And finally, I'm at the folder that has my Xcode proj uh, project file. Here, from here, from here, you type pod init. So if you get an error just like the one that I experienced where it was saying that you uh, didn't have permission and you needed to look at the license first, well, what you'd have to do, like this one right here, it tells you to um, agreeing to the Xcode iOS license requires admin privileges, Pre please run this command. Uh, and then that's what I did, ran this command, and then you have to read, well, you can read or not read it, but you can scroll through it, and then you hit agree at the end, and we should be good now. So. That's not something that I had to do before, but it might have something to do with the fact that I'm using a beta version of Xcode and maybe this is something that they will do now. So let me type in pod init. And after you do that, if you just go ahead and open up your folder, you're going to see now you have an additional pod file inside your Xcode project. So we're going to open this up in a text editor, uh, for example, Sublime, the one that I use right here. Uh, we are going to then, in this file, list all of the third-party libraries that we're going to use with this Xcode project. So as you can see from these instructions here, we're going to want to add this to our pod file. So I'm going to grab that and paste that in there. And then I'm going to save this file. Make sure you hit save. And then we're going to run pod install, which is going to read all of those libraries from the pod file. Uh, it's going to go and fetch them and then it's going to add them into your Xcode project. So this is how CocoaPods helps you manage those dependencies for your app through this pod file. Now many of the third-party libraries that you want to work with, um, let's say for example Twitter or Facebook or maybe even the GitHub libraries, some user-generated ones, a lot of them will be available as a CocoaPod that you can just grab that pod URL uh, and then put it in your pod file and then just run pod install. So simple as that. And then when it comes time to updating those libraries, all you're gonna have to do again is just hit pod install or pod update. It's going to make sure that you have all of the appropriate versions or the latest versions uh, and then you're good to go. All right, so that part is done. Let's click next. Oh, one thing, if you're unfamiliar with CocoaPods, let me just go back to here. After you hit pod install, it's going to create this XC workspace file for your app. Use this file for all future development on your application. So what we're supposed to do here is we're gonna close the project in Xcode. And then if you open up your folder, you're gonna see that there's a whole bunch of new files. Inside the pods directory, you're gonna have all of these libraries, uh, the Firebase libraries that we wanted to add. But now instead of opening up the Xcode proj file, you're going to open up the XC workspace file. And this will include your pods or your libraries that uh, you added. All right, so that's done. Let's go next. So we're going to add the initialization code. We're going to choose the Swift version. And you can see here, there are two different lines. In the app delegate file, you're going to import 
database, right? This is going to say that you're using those Firebase libraries. Uh, and then Firebase app.configure, which is going to configure your app. It's going to uh, basically take a look at your um, configuration file that we added. Remember this guy right here, Google service info.plist contains all of the configuration details to connect to this particular Firebase backend. All right, so let's go into app delegate we are going to import Firebase. And then in here, uh, it, just in case you're not familiar, did finish launching with options. Um, that's this one right here. And we're gonna wanna do it above the return true statement. Okay, so Firebase app dot configure. Now, if you know, you're typing that and it doesn't autocomplete or it doesn't show up, or maybe you get some errors after typing this, um, what I would try and do is just press Command B to build your project to make sure that Xcode uh, realizes you've added all of these um, Xcode, uh, sorry, I mean Firebase libraries to your project. So that's what you want to do there. All right, so while that's building, let's go on to the next part. Now run your app to verify your installation. So it's going to continue checking for a while what we're going to want to do uh, so that our build succeeded. And so no errors. What we're gonna wanna do now is just run our project in the simulator. We're gonna launch it. Let's click this button or press Command R to launch it. Your simulator might take a while to boot up if you don't have it up already. But after it launches your app, it's going to ping the uh, Firebase servers and this should turn into a check mark. And then that's our flag that we've set all of this up correctly. So. You know, I know this setup process was a little bit tedious, but after you do it a couple of times and you've got CocoaPods installed already, it makes working with uh, Firebase in the future a lot more simple, as well as working with any other third-party libraries um, that also have CocoaPods. Um, you're gonna see a lot of debug output here. I wouldn't worry about any of this. And you can see there's a ton on mine too. Now the app has finished launching, it's a blank screen because it's a new project, but this sometimes takes a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds to register because it doesn't check constantly. So I don't know what that interval is, but uh, if, if you don't see it after a couple, like a minute, I would just close your app, just stop it and run it again, just to make sure, uh, and then continue to console. So that's it, now we're ready to build the login UI in the next video. And then we're gonna hook it up. Uh, we're gonna set up the authentication store and we are going to um, start doing all the fun stuff now that the setup is done. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and you wanna see the next one, make sure you don't miss it by making sure you're subscribed and enabling that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload the next video. So don't forget to thumbs up the video and leave a comment below letting me know if you've worked with Firebase before or not. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, bye for now.